Hey everyone, 3D Hero here, and welcome to today's latest mix up builds. To where today I've got a build focusing on the Devil Joy Oppressor Charge Blade, and welcome my way around a high damaging and elemental discharge build. Suitable for those that want to experiment with elemental dragon charge blades more, and have a viable build against them. So, firstly, I must say that this charge blade visually looks amazing. It looks like something you would see from a Berserker manga, if any of you here are a fan of Berserker and Guts and such. And it also handles quite amazingly in terms of wall damage, whether you store your charged files into your sword, or use your SAED on monsters. But sadly, this isn't everyone's cup of tea to try out, as it uses elemental files. And as many people know, elemental files in this game don't do a lot of damage to monsters, as they're currently capped. So you have to make do with what you've got, unless you go with alternatives. Also, like all Devil Joe weapons, they come with minus affinity that affect the overall damage you do when attacking a monster. But in our case here, I've managed to actually negate it and actually have a bit of extra affinity on our side to actually make it a bit more effective in terms of going up against certain monsters. For me though, this is a weapon that I've always wanted to generally try out once Devil Joe was announced, simply to see how well this weapon stands out compared to other charge blades. Plus, elemental charge blades don't get talked about or generally played around a lot by most people, since you can always use impact files which are much better in the long run, and they get buffed when using artillery, which overall blows elemental out of the water. But elemental charge blades are still viable in the game, no matter what people say, or no matter what you see on the screen, it's always viable. Now the set I have here offers you high damage from both sword and shield mode, and axe, or your elemental discharge mode. But one thing I have to say about this weapon is that you have to use it against monsters with weak to dragon damage, if you want to make a noticeable effect in terms of damage, as using it against anything else won't bring out much for you, which is a sad downside for the builds. However, with this downside, it doesn't negate how much damage you do overall, as I noticed charging my blade and doing normal attacks from there offer me more quicker and harder damage that can vary from the 40 ranges to the 60 plus ranges. And with white sharpness in play, I can stick around and stay in my sword and shield mode until the monster falls over, and either carry on or discharge the build up files, and then carry on doing more damage. But this all depends on if I hit weak points when I'm in sword and shield mode as that's where the main damage will be coming from. Now, when it comes down to using my SAED, which really does vary on monsters, when I use it against monsters such as Giante, I could get around 100 plus on the first hit, and then the discharge after, which would net me around 30 to 20 plus damage, which sounds awful, but do this now, on Raytheon or Rathalos for example, and I can get around 150 to 200 plus on the first hit, and then around 40 to 60 plus on the discharge, which sounds a whole lot more better and damaging, so you really have to play around and experiment with a build against other monsters to see how well it fares for you. I've also went ahead and added a health and affinity augmentation to the weapon, so I can be aggressive in the fights, which suits the weapon place I'll, I'll be doing very well since you're going to be up close most of the time. Now don't look at this as something not to try out, as honestly it's refreshing to try something different out instead of sticking with the common meta tier weapons, and this is a mix set that will give you results no matter what you do, as it offers two sides for you to play and experiment with. So with that being said, let's go with the main skills used, and remember, you can always change some of the following skills to suit your needs if you disagree with what I went with. So the entirety of the build will be focused on, on the raw damage you can do in your sword and shield mode, and the SAED you'll produce will only be done when the monster is vulnerable enough to activate it. So I went with the standard weakness exploit 3, so I could do extra damage when it hits the monster's weak points, Attack 4 for that extra damage boost and 5% affinity, which will come in handy for negating some of that minus affinity from the weapon. Maximum might 2 for a extra 20% affinity to negate the minus affinity of a weapon as well, so now we should be down to 0% affinity. And Agitate level 1, which is an extra skill from the Gentry boost that can help when monsters enrages. Now the other skills we have left over are ones that focus on self-improvement of the build, so it can help make the build feel more effective in long fights. So we have Handicraft 4 which will allow my weapon to retain its white sharpness much longer and keep up extra damage when in sword and shield mode or axe mode. This is important as you're going to be staying in the two modes the most throughout fights and not be simply spamming SAED all the time, but you can take a handicraft or two off and replace it with something that increases the amount of dragon damage you do, or fit in a dual slot that would benefit this build even more. It's kind of up to you really at this point. Next we have Focus 2, which helps with building up my files faster when doing a charge slash attack. If you want to, you can change this up to get a Focus 3 instead, which would require you to remove a piece of armor for it, but this depends on what type of place you are aiming for, 
such as are you aiming for a SAED spam or are you focused on a sword and shield plus SAED combo which is generally what my build is. Next we have defense boost 2 which is a side skill that the armor offered which is nice for that extra build defense when doing tempered runs but not overall needed. And then lastly we have dragon attack level 1 which give me a small boost in my dragon elemental damage but as this is the only one being used within the build, it may not be worth using unless you make space for a level 2 or 3 variant. If you don't go with the skill, then you just have a free empty spot to fill in by yourself. Overall, this will give you a attack damage of 889, a defense of 441, 10% affinity, and a mighty looking undead warrior at best. So in terms of player style you'll be playing with for this build, it really does depend on the monster you face, as in one case you'll be able to build up and spam your SAED move on the monster you're facing multiple times and do good damage that can break the monster's parts multiple times if they are generally slow, easy to read or leaves itself vulnerable all the time. However, if you're going up against a monster that is fast moving and aggressive such as Nergiante or Hushala, then your priority should be staying in sword and shield mode and amping your sword so you can do extra damage while moving around quickly. Like I said before, this build feels a lot more better and stronger when in sword and shield mode with a amp sword as you can pile up damage a whole lot quicker compared to spamming SAED after a combo which I find strange as when compared to other charge blades such as the Great Jaguar's charge blade or Diablo's charge blade you can switch out in terms of what move you want to do next and no matter what it will always do great damage which can't always be said when using a elemental charge blade sadly but the simple reason behind this is that elemental in game just isn't that strong as they have a cap which non-elemental don't have to worry about. Now the only way you can increase the elemental damage is by using a rough loss piece bonus, but this will change up the build completely and could result in losing important skills that make this weapon practically viable in some situations, like losing out on some handicraft which would result in your sharpness being lower and means you'll be sharpening a lot more in fights, but this is kind of debatable depending on what type of pieces you're going with. On the other hand, the extra elemental bonus buff you get may actually mean you do more damage compared to what you do at the moment and could possibly mean you could do more damage when you're doing your SAED which nonetheless can be the deal breaker in terms of killing the monster quickly or being a non-needed skill that can be replaced with something even more better. This is something I had a debate with to see whether it was better to go with more raw damage and sticking with doing standard attacks and then SAED when I get a chance or go full elemental and get a small buff that may pay off when I do SAED and personally I found that sticking with option 1 and waiting for the opportunity to use my SAED was a lot better as a Vaughn weapon is generally outstandingly good for outsourcing damage so you don't have to rely on using your SAED to do large damage but if you want to do large dragon damage against a monster weak to that element then this build right here will give you what you want and if not then stick around and I'll give you something even more better in the near future but I highly recommend you give this weapon a go as it feels powerful when using these monsters a weak to its element or if you're not going to use it just for its element you can use it for its sword and shield mode or axe mode and it does pretty great damage. No word of a lie. And that comes to the end of the video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did then a like and a sub would be appreciated. Do comment if there's anything you're confused with or would change and I'll try my best to help you out. But once again thank you for watching and I do hope to see you again soon.